We want to turn now to the fallout tied to the crisis at the southern border. Last week, we saw scenes of thousands of Haitian migrants gathering under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas. The Biden administration removed many of them from that makeshift camp and sent them back to Haiti. This morning, we're getting our first look up close at what those migrants are facing now back home. Joining us from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, MSNBC correspondent Jacob Sobroff. Jacob, good morning. What does it look like there on the ground? Good morning, Willie. It is a tough situation here on the ground in Port-au-Prince. And as you mentioned, since the nation's attention was really captured by the images of those some 30,000 migrants under the bridge in Texas, around five to 6,000 have been sent back, deported, expelled to this crime-riddled city. And when they get on the ground here on those chartered flights, they're not only looking around, but oftentimes they've got nowhere to go. This morning, hundreds of Haitian migrants waking up in a country many left behind years ago. Flown here to Port-au-Prince from the United States by the Biden administration after attempting to declare asylum in Texas. Once they arrive at this airport, many of them are confused. Many of them are asking why they are here in the first place. So far, around 6,000 Haitian migrants have been repatriated, sent back to their so-called home country, though many have lived in South and Central America for years. Wednesday was the busiest day yet for expulsions. The Biden administration under fire from both Republicans and Democrats, using a CDC authority meant to protect public health, saying the coronavirus pandemic justifies the mass deportations. The move led the U.S. Special Envoy to Haiti to resign last week, calling the U.S.'s treatment of Haitians inhumane. When was the last time you were here in Haiti? 2013. 2013. 2013. You haven't been here for almost 10 years. Once off the plane, they're shuttled to this processing center run by the United Nations. My main concern is that a lot of people, thousands of people, will be in areas that are controlled by the gangs, that are uh, affected by the earthquake or in other difficult situations. And the more come here, the more difficult the situation will be. One family told us despite being sent back, they'll try again to leave the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. We want to live somewhere we can have a better life. So, guys, while DHS says thousands have turned around from that Del Rio encampment and gone back to Mexico after these expulsions started, there are also thousands, according to NBC News reporting, uh, staging in Colombia for a potential journey uh, to the U.S. southern border. And on top of that, DHS is reportedly preparing, according to new reporting from Julia Ainsley, uh, for what could be a record surge of people coming to the U.S. southern border uh, in the months ahead. All right, Jacob Soboroff reporting for us live from Haiti this morning. Jacob, thanks so much as always. Joe, you think about the journey that some of these migrants have made from Haiti to Colombia or through Panama, up through just to try to get to the United States, many of them entering the country, but also as Jacob is, is showing us in real time, uh, many of them being put on planes and returned back where that journey started. It is, it is tragic. Uh, the story of Haiti is a tragic story. Our southern border remains the place where there's an ongoing humanitarian crisis. We have to bring order to it. Uh, we have to bring order to it. Um, Reverend Al, uh, today, a big day for you. Uh, the release of your paperback, Rise Up. We're going to have you on, of course, tomorrow as well. But we wanted to have you on the, the pub date. Uh, tell us about Rise Up. Well, I had came out with the book late last year. I decided to uh, add a long preface to bring us into the first eight months of the Biden administration, the Voting Rights March and all. So people should go, uh, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, it's out today, paperback. What updated brings you up to uh, uh, weeks ago on how we should rise up and save the democracy that we all need, love and cherish. All right, Reverend Al, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. That does it for us this morning. Chris Jansing picks up the coverage right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.